Hey friends, welcome to Kid Life. Woo! What? Oh, he's shy. He wants to say welcome to Kid Life too. Woo! Why didn't you just say that? Woo! Oh. Let's pray. Hey, my elementary friends, are you guys ready to get started? Let's go ahead and get this service started right with some prayer. So go ahead and bow your heads, close your eyes, and let's pray. God, I thank you for my friends that are watching today. I ask that you bless them right now in your name, that they have an amazing time learning all about you. Let us have a fun time. Let us have a blast. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, after months of training, uh, this morning it was a five o'clock start. We had the snails out on the gallops. Um, Man, this show is so boring. Well, you picked it. Well, that doesn't mean I want to watch it. Why would you pick a show that you have no interest in watching? I don't know. It sounded fun. Snail races? Really? Well, I always wondered how the snails put their sneakers on. <laughs> It's time! My name's Matt. My name is Mason. My brother and I have a long-standing tradition. Every day at the exact same time. We enter... The Battle Zone. But it's not just any Battle Zone. We've been having Nerf Wars since we were little kids. And today, he's going down. He's going down. You boys better get in place. Ready? Aw, oh, man. I didn't find a good hiding spot. I need to use my tactical skills to find out where Mason is. Oh, that was close. Looks like Mason's got the high ground. He's got a gun that can shoot one of those little puffy Nerf bullets all the way over here. This little wimpy gun won't shoot that far. What am I gonna do? I need to get across the yard to get that bigger gun. But if I set foot around this tree, Mason's gonna get me for sure. The only way is to run all the way across the yard. It's a huge risk. But it's just like David in the Bible story I read. If you don't risk it, you don't win the victory. I've gotta risk it for the biscuit. Oh man! Ah oh, yes! It's like I said kids, if you don't take a risk, you'll never win the victory. God will help you in the battle zone if you trust him and take the risk. You'll learn more about this in your lesson today, and we'll see you next time in the battle zone. Best two out of three? Boys, come in and make some meatloaf! Great. What's happening, you crazy cats? It's me, Disco Dave, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. I am so excited to be telling you all about this groovy new series called Battle Zone. Today, we're learning about how God can use us if we take risks 
and do what's right. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. If I take a risk, God will bring a victory. Hot dog, that's the truth. Sometimes you find yourself in some risky situations. Dynamite! Well, dynamite is risky. But I'm talking about when you are facing a situation in life that you know God wants you to face, but you are just so afraid to face it. It may be a risk, but God will help you through it. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. If I take a risk, God will bring a victory. All right, kids, that right there is what you gotta know. Well, I'm Disco Dave saying, Dino Mine! Hey kids, what time is it? You can sing? That's actually pretty good.
Voila! Hello, boys and girls! Once again, this is I, Presto Changeo, the world's greatest Presto Digit. Presto Digit. Magic guy, you get it? Well, once again, I am here to boggle your mind and tickle your senses with today's Powder Verse. Today's Powder Verse says. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? Psalm 27, 1. Isn't that just spectacular, Powderverse? Ah, yes, be amazed. But just like I do at all of my sold out shows around the world, well, really in front of the grocery store before they call the police, I am going to make things disappear with the help of my handy dandy assistant, Hokey. It's Hocus. I'm not hokey, and I'm not pokey. It's hocus pocus. Now, can we just get on with the power verse? Yeah, sure, whatever. Now it is time to make part of the power verse disappear. Watch. Ah, yes. Now, which words should I make disappear? Hmm, how about this one? And this one. Yes. Now, boys and girls, you shall all say the power verse with Hokey! It's Hocus! Whatever, man! Come on! Work with me here! All right, everyone on the count of three. One, two, three! The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? Psalm 27, 1. That was pretty amazing, but prepare to be amazed! Err... I am going to now make even more words vanish before your eyes, like this one. Ha <laughs> ha! Now, let's just see how well you kids remember it. Say it with me now on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three! The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? Psalm 27, 1. Good job! Now for my greatest trick ever! Not really. Quit your yapping before I turn you into a glove. All right, boys and girls, it is now time for my greatest trick. I shall make myself disappear. This is Presto Changeo saying, now you see me. Ha! Now you don't. <laughs> On the count of three. One, two, three. Pumpernickel chili fries. <laughs> Today we're going to learn about one of the most famous stories in the Bible. It begins with the army of Israel, God's chosen people, in a terrible situation. The army of Israel is being challenged by their enemies, the Philistines. If they lose, they will have to become slaves to the Philistines. That's not good. A young man named David arrived at the battle to bring some food for his brothers who were fighting. When David arrived, he saw how upset and scared all the soldiers were. Suddenly, David heard the reason why they were scared. A giant named Goliath was the champion of the Philistines. He screamed, Send me a man who will fight me. Goliath was over nine feet tall and had never been beaten in a battle. The soldiers were scared to take on this giant. Not a single one of them was willing to take the risk of going up against the mighty Goliath. David couldn't believe it. He looked around and saw nothing but scared soldiers. So he spoke up. I will fight this giant. The soldiers laughed at him. Everyone tried to talk David out of fighting Goliath. When that didn't work, the king tried to offer David his armor, but the armor didn't fit. David was just a kid. So David decided to take a huge risk and take on the giant in his own way. David was a shepherd. He was used to defending his sheep with a slingshot. So David grabbed five smooth stones from a nearby stream and headed out to face Goliath. Goliath was not impressed. He made fun of David because he was just a boy. That didn't matter to David. He knew that God was on his side. David yelled back at Goliath. I come to you in the name of the Lord God. This is his battle. David loaded up his slingshot with one of his stones. He hurled it around and around until he finally let it fly towards Goliath. The rock sailed through the air. It must have seemed like forever as the rock sailed toward Goliath. Suddenly, the rock found its target. 
the rock hit Goliath right between the eyes. It hit him so hard that it knocked him to the ground, completely unconscious. David ran over and killed Goliath right there in the middle of the field. He had beaten the giant, and God was receiving the glory. Imagine if David had not been willing to take the risk. If he had given in to his fear and not fought the giant, the entire nation of Israel would have become slaves to the Philistines. This story teaches us that we are never too young to take a risk for God. Today, we're going to learn more about how we can win incredible victories if we are willing to take a risk and trust God in the battle zone. Hey boys and girls, I've got a question for you. Have you ever faced a situation that you knew you had to face, you just knew it, but it seemed maybe too big? Maybe it seemed too scary. Or you know what? God might have been asking you to put your entire allowance into the missionary's plea. And you're just like, no, no, that's kind of hard to do because I've been trying to save money to get this new video game system or maybe the newest cell phone, like an iPhone or an Android, you know, or maybe just maybe God was asking you to go and spread the gospel to someone in your school. And you were like, whoa, somebody uh, got the wrong person because I, look, I can't talk, I can't say anything, uh, I'm too shy to say anything. What if they don't listen to me? Or maybe, just maybe God might have been leading you to go sit with or go talk with the person that everybody at school has been avoiding or even making fun of. And you've been thinking, no, no, I can't go talk to them because if I talk to them, then they're gonna make fun of me. I can't do that. And, and every situation that we've talked about, it seems like we've been taking, or let me put it this way, it might be costing you something with your allowance, it might be costing you all your money, uh, with you know going to spread the gospel, it might be costing you some embarrassment, or, or you know talking with that person no one's really talking to, it might be costing you your friends or your popularity in school, or better yet, each of these things that we're talking about, it seems like you might be taking a risk. And we're not talking about the board game Risk, which I love, it's a really fun game. But, moving on, a risk. Sometimes in life we have to take risks and it might seem scary and it might seem hard to do and, and you're probably like, you know what, I don't wanna do this. You know, I, I like having my allowance. I like not having to talk to the person no one's talking to. I don't wanna share the gospel. I like having the gospel share with me on Sundays. Here's the thing, if we're going to win in the battle zone, here's our first point. I must be willing to risk and do what's right. It's true that sometimes God will be like, hey, I'm gonna need you to do this. And it may seem a little risky or it may even seem like a big risk. And those things may seem giant and scary, but here's the thing. God hasn't called us to do just the things that are easy. Sometimes we're gonna have to do the things that are risky and we're gonna have to obey them. Even if it seems big and scary, we're gonna have to obey him. And remember David in our Bible story? Here's David, a small boy, going to go face a big giant named Goliath. And here's the thing, he was willing to risk his life when none of the adults, none of the adults, let me, let me get a little bit closer here. None of the adults were willing to risk their lives, but the boy was willing to go and face this giant that all he had to do was take his big pinky toe or the big toe, you take your pick, any toe. They were all huge because all he had to do was just pick up his foot, put it down and <laughs> squash David for dinner. Boys and girls, Sometimes risks are big and scary. I wouldn't say, they may, I mean, you know what? Maybe sometimes they do feel Goliath size. Maybe these risks do seem huge to you. But here's the thing, sometimes we've got to take them. Sometimes we've got to take them. Thankfully, David was willing to take that risk and look what happened. Lives were changed as a result of it. You must be willing to take the risk sometimes. And if you do, Lives will be changed. Remember, I fight in God's power, not my own. David knew he could take on the giant. He knew he could take a risk because he knew he was not fighting in his own power. Remember when he faced Goliath on the battlefield? 
He shouted out towards Goliath, you come to me with sword and with, uh, with shield. I come to you in the name of the Lord God Almighty. This is his battle. He will give me the victory. David didn't say, I will win or I'm the man. He knew that it was God who had the power to defeat Goliath, not him. When you find yourself in the battle zone, you have to remember that it's God's power you are fighting with. Next time you're taking a risk for God, you just do what David did. You lift your voice and say, hey, I'm not fighting in my power, but I'm fighting in God's power and God's gonna have the victory and God's gonna win and God's gonna do it. It's not by my power, not by my strength, but his power and his strength. Hopefully you have a megaphone when you do that, but if you just say it with your own voice, say it out loud, lift your voice and say that God's gonna do this. God's got the victory. God's got the power. God's got the strength. It's not by my strength or my might, but it's by his power and his strength. I may be young, but I'm not too young to fight in God's power. And do you know what's gonna happen? Let me tell you what's gonna happen. The same thing that happened to David. If I take a risk, God will bring the victory. Just like God brought the victory to young David over Goliath, God will bring the victory to you when you are willing to take a risk and fight in his power. God is looking for young boys and young girls that are willing to step up and say, you know what? It may be big, it may be scary, it may be risky, but I am willing to take the risk and fight in his power. Now, you may not have to go against a Goliath with a sword and a, and a slingshot, but there's gonna be some things in life that are gonna be big and they're gonna be scary and you're gonna have to be willing to take the risk. But if you remember that it's God's power that is working through you and not your own, you will have the victory in whose name? In God's name. You have the victory in God's name. You will have victory in God. You need to say that to yourself, I think. You know what? Say, I will have victory in God's name. Wait, do it again, do it again, do it again, because I, I, I didn't feel that. Come on, say it one more time. Say, I will have victory in God's name. There it is. There it is. It may seem like a huge assignment, but if you take the risk and trust God, he will bring the victory. Don't be afraid. Be like David and realize that when you are in the battle zone, you should take a risk and win the victory for God. Boys and girls, risks are scary things. They seem huge. They seem out of this world astronomically large, like the lion. But sometimes we're gonna have to take them. But here's the thing, when you take these risks, let me tell you something, God is gonna be right there with you. God is gonna have his hand on you, guiding you, and strengthening you. Remember, it's his power, not yours. And in the end, God's gonna get the victory. Just trust him, obey him, he's got it. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this message today. I thank you that you were always with us. You're always guiding us. And that even in moments when things seem too risky and too, too big for us, it's your power that's flowing through us. Help us this week that if we face anything like this, <laughs> to, to, to help us to lift up our voice and just say, my God is bigger than you. I may be young, but I come in God's power and God will get the victory in this. We thank you for your victory. We thank you for your strength. We love you so much. In your name we pray, amen. God created everything in the universe, including you. You see, God loves you so much and wants to have a friendship with you. But there's a problem. We've all sinned. That means we've all done something wrong, every single one of us. And that sin separates us from God. But 
there's good news. You and I don't have to be separated anymore. Because of God's great love for us, He sent His only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross and come back to life for us so that we can be made right with Him. All we have to do is choose to make Jesus the leader of our life. How? It's as easy as A, B, C. A. Admit. Admit what you've done wrong and tell God you don't want to sin anymore. B. Believe. Believe that God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven and that you are now right with God. C. Confess. Confess to others that Jesus is the leader of your life and your best friend. Choose to make Jesus the leader of your life. Get to know Him and how much He loves you and make the choice to love Him back. Hey, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed today's message on David and Goliath, and I hope you enjoyed today's service. Before we go, I want to do something that we do here at Life Source called Declarations. And the reason why we want to do that is because remember at the end of today's message when I was talking about how David shouted to Goliath about how you come with me, it was sword and shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, and that we should lift our voices whenever we face something that might be risky or might seem to cost a lot. I want us to do that because at the end of every service here at Live Source, we always say these declarations because we believe that there is power of life and death in the tongue. And when we say these declarations, we say them with such authority and power and we believe every word we say. So I need you to do me this. I need you to stand up wherever you are. And if you're in the car, don't worry. You can sit right there and you can still do it with us. But I need everyone to stand up and I want you to raise your right hand with me. The right one. There you go. And we're going to say these declarations. I want you to repeat after me and say it out loud, okay? Because remember, we believe and we trust in God and everything we say. Amen? All right, here we go. Raise your right hand and say, I am saved. I am healed. I am free. I have victory. I have authority. Change is here. And God is on my side. In Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for stopping and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.